First up, I wash my hair using these lovely Scandi vegan products by Maria Neela. So just washed as normal and then conditioned. I even have a weird washing my hair face, much like my mascara face. This stuff smells lovely, by the way. This will just get it in good condition before you apply the colour. So now towel dry the hair as best you can. Rub, rub, rub. See, don't rub too hard because it does damage the hair when you do that. But try and get as much of the water out as possible. Squeeze a little bit more. Next up you'll be applying Maria Neela's Pink Pop Colour Refresh product and just put it in from root to tip and just make sure you've covered every part of your hair as best you can. It's helpful actually to have someone check that you've got all the bits at the back because I know I missed a few bits myself. Rub it in to just make sure the colour's taking to the hair. Once you've washed the colour out, condition again just to lock in that colour as best as possible. So first up, I'm going to be applying some mineral makeup. My skin's pretty good after holidays, so this mineral foundation gives me enough coverage. Um, but first, get that hair out of your peepers so you can concentrate on doing a good job on your face. Tap that excess powder off the brush, otherwise you'll look a bit cakey. Yeah, I forgot there, so. When she was filming The Aviator and really doing that Hollywood glam look, she was a bit more flawless. So I'm not too worried about being kind of that unreachable perfection look. So I'm just kind of giving some rough coverage, um, just trying to give as even a skin tone as possible. As you can see from this image, I'm not doing too great at that. Next up, I'm doing some very subtle contouring because I looked at the pictures and she did kind of have some light brown kind of tone in her hollows of her cheek just to give the illusion of the kind of extra sharp cheekbones. As you can see, my cheekbones aren't that great without contouring, so actually this is probably doing me a lot of favours. I actually used a foundation to do this rather than forking out for a proper contour kit because I don't do contouring that often. Group smile. If you've got pink hair, I think you can afford to be a bit more zealous with your blusher. So I've added quite a lot of pink to my cheeks here. Usually I don't like uh, blushes like this because when I rub it in, it tends to take off my foundation underneath and reveal the spots. But because my skin's all right at the moment, I quite like this little thing from number seven. It's a really pretty pink pop as well. There you go. It kind of matches my hair quite well, I think. Smiling creepily like that just helps you see if you've got it in the right place on your face. So next up, try and get rid of those bags a little bit. I've used a BB cream um, instead of an actual concealer and it does just as good a job. Just rub it in with your fingers. I know a lot of people use their sponges, some people use brushes, whatever works for you, I reckon. We're never fully gonna cover those bags though, are we? Let's face it. The basic makeup's pretty much done there. You can still see my real skin kind of shining through a bit there. So now on to the eyes. I didn't have any suitable pink eyeshadow, if I'm honest with you, and I'm so broke, so I just used my shimmer block um, as an eyeshadow. Why not? It seemed to work all right. So yeah, picked one of the pinks from there and just put it on the eyelids with the littlest neatest brush I could find that wasn't covered in biscuit. So just sweeped across and then went to one of those really cheap, well I should say affordable sets that has a bit of everything in them and just found like a dark kind of purpley pinky hue to put into the creases of my eyes. Ooh, it's my eyeball. Ooh. 
I seem to be enjoying it though, don't I? Don't do that face. Over and over and over. There you go. Job done and save some pennies. Win, win. I look quite smug in myself, don't I? So next up, this lovely Steeler eyeshadow. Is that how you say it? So I was going to put this right on the centre part of my lid. Kind of at the, the peak of the dome of the eyeball, if that makes sense. I remember when we sported this in the 90s, it was the in look and then a few years later it was embarrassing and look I'm doing it again I haven't blended that too well but I promise I'll fix that later or now this eyeshadow is also great to adding a bit of highlight under the brow there Next up, the trickiest bit for me, and that's eyeliner. This one's another felt tippy one. It's not as good as the Ico, but it, it's okay. So I was just gonna do a kind of a medium thickness line across the entire top lid. Not really doing a cat eye this time. It just goes slightly longer than the length of my eye though. I seem to crumble under the pressure and find this extremely hard when the camera's on. Oh, it's not too bad. The thing I loved about Gwen was she had brown eyes and I remember I always wanted like sparkly blue eyes or really unusual green eyes when I was younger and I hated that I had just boring poo brown but then I found her this blonde kind of vixen with these big brown eyes and I thought oh okay brown eyes can be cool maybe I think my cheeks need a bit more oomph to them to, so I've gone to the shimmer block to just add some shimmer to just I kind of think it adds a bit of life to my face a bit so it's less kind of matte so Next up, the lippy, and I've gone for a punchy red because I kind of like how she had the guts to put a really red lip with the pink hair. It's not an obvious choice, but it, it somehow works. So I've used this really nice moisturising body shop one. I will confess that it did get on my teeth an awful lot. Well, a builder smiled at me, so I smiled back and then he went, oh God. Sort your teeth out, love, and it was really embarrassing. So there's the lippy done. Now in the pictures I've seen, she has quite glossy red lips. Um, I didn't have a really glossy lipstick, so I'm going to add some of this Super Bar Moisturising Gloss over the top. I don't know about you, but I don't really like the feeling of having gloss on my lips anymore. It's all, it's all gooey and sticky. But I do like the appearance of it. I remember when I was a teenager, I couldn't get enough of gloss though. I've just dabbed it on so it's least gloopy as possible. If you look at the pictures during Return to Saturn era of Gwen Stefani, she had the very thin, very obviously drawn on eyebrows. I don't know if that was an intentional look, like some of the old silent movie stars, or whether she just overplucked. But I've got quite full brows, so I can't really achieve that, but I'm just gonna go in quite heavy with the eyebrow pencil. Usually I try and go quite sparingly and kind of like little brush strokes, but this time I'm going in pretty much just like a crayon and just scratching it in my face. So this isn't a subtle look, this is quite a harsh look. But we are trying to copy her look at this time, so there you go. Feels quite weird for me to have such dark brows actually. So next up, mascara. I feel like my face is never kind of done till I've got the mascara on. So the lower lashes first. Again, when I was referring to the pictures, 
her lower lashes were quite defined and almost spidery, which is kind of the look I go for anyway. So I just plastered on quite a lot of my drama hypnos. I never know how to say that. Next up, I applied top coat again. I decided not to do false lashes, mainly because in real life I just wouldn't, so I don't want to lie to you and pretend this is the look that I would do. Um, but obviously if you want to do that and you're good at applying them, then rock on. I feel like this mascara gives the effect of false lash anyway. I've got a bit of a corker on my chin as per usual. So I'm just going to dab a bit of concealer on that. And there's one that's going to be prime tomorrow that's just starting to emerge. And I thought I'd put concealer above my eyebrows just to kind of define them further. Almost like an outline. I've seen other vloggers do this and it seems to be a good little trick. So we're pretty much done now I think. Hmm, something's missing, what is it? Apart from looking like Gwen Stefani, but what else is missing? Gavin Rossdale, what else? Musical talent, innate coolness, the ability to dance, a good voice. What else? What else is it? Sex appeal. Ah uh, yeah, I've, I refer back to the pictures again and she does have a hint of liner just on the edges of the, the bottom of the eye on the waterline. So just put a bit of that in. Like I said, not the whole of the under eye. Now I think the face is where we want it to be at, just about. My eyes, you can never have enough mascara. So of course I put on another layer. Yeah, some scarf face again. Oh, that one's particularly special. So the thing with achieving her hair is, at that point, she kind of had a shoulder length bob, or is a bob ever shoulder length? Well, her hair was shoulder length, and she had layers in it, um, as well as a fringe. And when the fringe was getting a bit longer, she was sweeping it to the side and flicking it out. Um, she was flicking all the other layers at the front and at the bottom too. As someone that's got much longer hair without layers, this isn't something that I was able to achieve. Um, but I did put in some of my sleeping rollers just to get some more volume at the root and just to flick out my ends a little bit. So you could try that. Or if you do have layers um, and you think you'll be able to achieve Gwen's look, just use a round barrel brush and the heat of your hair dryer and just flick out those layers as you dry. If you're lazy like me, just go to your GHDs. As you bring the straightener down the length of your hair, just flick out at the end and you'll achieve kind of a flicked look. It won't be quite the same, but you know, this is not an exact copy of Gwen's look. This is just taking inspiration, taking the bits we like, um, the bits that will work with our own faces and just having a bit of fun. So don't stress yourself out too much trying to get an exact copy because let's face it, the majority of us will never look as good as Gwen. It's nice to try though, isn't it? So there we are. There's my attempt at some of Gwen's beauty looks from the return to Saturn era. Um, as you know, I'm no beauty guru, um, but I am having fun experimenting and trying to improve. If you like this video, it'd be so great if you gave me a thumbs up because the editing was a nightmare. Um, and leave a comment below. Love ya. Thank you. Bye.